as the first month of the legislative session concluding. Appropriations, Senate Appropriations Committee hearing from a lot of different department heads, a lot of different people on what's to come for fiscal year 2020. That's the process that we're in right now. It does start out early and you start your early morning meetings and carry over so there's no free time but well first of all the governor has to present the budget and then the house goes over it and the senate goes over it and then we come up and work out any problems we have with the governor's office or with the house part so that'll all happen and it won't be done until probably about the first of may sometime around there so that part's all started and so we start out with taking testimony from people in the area that mostly gets into local nonprofits and area agencies that come in and make their request and we're in the second phase now where the departments are coming in and explaining what they want to increase what they can decrease and where they're at and what their needs wants. So we're in that process and maybe 75% through that. This year is a little bit different that the Department of Economic Development is downsizing from 800 employees to 300 employees and they're feeding the other areas off that don't really deal with economic development and they don't need to be in charge of community development block grants they don't need to be in charge of all these different programs they need to concentrate on just strictly economic development and it's tough in Missouri I mean not having a right to work we're competing with all the neighboring states that have it and that's tough on us to get new business we've had this huge workforce concentrating on so many different things. We had the largest staff of 14 states or comparable states in the Midwest. Rob Dixon's the new director of it. We've had like 10 directors in the last 14 years and some good ones, but he's willing to make some changes. We're concentrating more like Georgia, Tennessee, the growth states, and that's where the growth in the United States is at, is in those southeast states. And so that's what we're going to do, and, and he's prepared to challenge some of that and go out and, and try and get industry into Missouri. So that's a big thing. That's going to involve a lot of budget thought and concentration about going. I think it's going to be good for all Missouri. Rob is from the Springfield area. He was over the Springfield Chamber at one time, so he understands the needs, and that's the growth of, of the state is in, the, in our area. So that's a big thing, and the governor has taken hold of this, working with him really close, devising the different departments and letting them absorb. There won't be an increase in any employees in any department, but nor will there be a decrease. Now, there will be some as they retire. Those jobs will not be filled, but that will concentrate us on economic development, and that's been my whole philosophy. Jobs takes care of everything. You know, that adds more money to our schools, takes people off the welfare roll, gets them encouraged. It's good for education. It's good for the state of Missouri. It's where it's all at, in my opinion, is jobs. To move some of those offices from economic development, I think, falls under the wider umbrella of the, the workforce development goals that the governor set out. Right. His, his, his two goals are infrastructure and the workforce development. Talk a little bit about the infrastructure because he has a bonding plan for the bridges. He didn't come up with that list. The highway department did not come up with that list. You start out, if you want a roads project, something to with roads in your area, you start out convincing your county that that's the number one priority, and then they go to the regional planning commissions, and they sort through them, and then they get priority ratings, and it's quite a process, and MoDOT really doesn't pick the projects. It's fair. It takes politics out of it. There's some areas that'll get bridges repaired, some areas won't, but this will be the 250 worst bridges, maybe 300 worst bridges in the state of Missouri, and that's what we need to take care of first. Maximum amount is $8 million per bridge, and there's a lot of them that 500000 will fix up, a lot of rural bridges or 800,000 will fix up. But strictly going off that list of needs and the worst bridges in the state of Missouri and the worst areas. People will try and get, and there's already some people that don't feel like they're getting their fair share, but we need to do this for Missouri, not just what's best for one county or another county. Like San Charles County, I don't think they had a single project, which one says that's good that having bridges that are deficient, that the rural areas are standing up getting some of this money too. And that, that'll be a whole lot of it is the rural areas. And that's a big part of it is wide areas, again, like the Ozarks, where there are a lot of waterways and a lot of bridges and some a of them have been looked at for a long time. <laughs> exactly. Yep. A lot of hills and stuff like that. And that water comes off those in a hurry. And what we've seen from flooding in the past couple of years and all along through, you know, history, that area floods a whole lot more than North Missouri. And of course, the big rivers. But we could spend $200 million building a bridge across Mississippi or Missouri, or maybe more than that. But this concentrates on these small bridges and get them out of the way. And they're dangerous. And we've got three bridges in the state of Missouri that are closed that don't allow traffic right now. His bridge plan is creating a lot of interest, but if we all get together and work together, we'll come up with a good proposal, I think.